Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio on Saga 960 AM. Well, I've got an interesting uh, person to introduce you to tonight. Her name is Marianne McMillan, and she runs something called The Next Music Generation, which is a website and podcast. And, uh, and uh, well, let me ask her to explain it. Marianne, tell us, what is Next Music Generation? Great. Well, um, thank you, Brian, for letting me be a part of your show. I, um, you know, I've been working on The Next Music Generation since 2015. Um, I've had much success with doing movie premieres, booking talent into major productions, um, working with various different artists across the globe, which has been incredible. Um, I've also expanded on, on doing my own particular podcasts, much like yours, um, where you're, mine is more so just around inviting different artists to, be a part to participate and be a part of something. Um, you know, I have my own talent agency, um, my own music label. I'm also working on some, um, a major, a major project with, um, a college and university. Currently at the moment, we're actually in the third phase of the initial project where, um, you know, we're building out the platform through Microsoft, um, which is really exciting. So much like Zoom, much like um, these video conferences that are out there, the next music generation will now be able to provide access um, to talent and industry professionals to communicate and do um, meetings, schedule, um, you know, conference calls, private calls, um, you know, and, and, you know, to help them get them, get themselves out there pretty much. <laughs> so, so tell me what's your background and how did you get into promoting burgeoning uh, young uh, up and coming musicians? So basically uh, it was back in 2014, there was an article that was produced um, here in Toronto. I don't know if you've heard of Metro News, which is pretty much um, a community newspaper that's inside of the subway. And when I was in the subway, I read this article in my, I felt like time just froze. It was like, you know, when you just feel a passion and you feel a connection to something, it was like, that was my drive. Like, um, so when I read the article, it said that they wanted to make Toronto the next music city. And also they wanted to connect the Canadian artists inside the industry in the United States. So they invested about $30.6 million in the music industry. So that was really intriguing for me. So I started doing some initial research um, and I learned so much from there. That was the starting point. <laughs> and, and so you say that you've got podcasts uh, and you what, do interviews with different, uh, different musicians? Yes. So um, also I have my own magazine. Um, also I'm a Canadian, I'm considered a Canadian broadcaster now. So we produce um, a lot of um, Canadian Canadian productions and um, we help support these indie productions and stuff as well. Yeah. Excellent. And so tell us some of the artists that uh, you've introduced to the world that you think are up and coming from Canada. Um, I think there's quite a few. There's so many to, to talk about. Um, I can't really name, but I know that there's a special few that I'm a handful of people that I'm working with right now. Um, there was one particular female. She's based in Toronto. Her name's Luna. And um, she is somebody that everyone needs to look out for because I really think that she's going she's gonna to be that storm that's going to come through the city for sure. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, if yeah. you ever want to introduce me to her and have me introduce her to, to my listeners, uh, let me know because that would be fantastic. And so you're, you're also a talent agency. What do you do as a talent agency? Um, so the talent, as a talent agent, I book talent inside of major um, productions across the world um, globally um, so with that being said it's more of um, you know outsourcing and looking for the right talent to fit um, a production need mm -hmm. and um, so you're, you're working on behalf of the artist or on behalf of the venues uh, the venues and the artists um, so I have a personal relationship with a lot of the casting directors here in Toronto and also like globally, um, where I've introduced them to my platform, um, and they are affiliates, they're partners with me on the next music generation, um, and the talent would be able to have access to these particular casting agents to book their own shows eventually. 
We're chatting with Marianne uh, McMullen right now from uh, Next Music Generation. We're going to take a break for messages and be right back. Stay with us. Well, welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960 AM. We're chatting tonight with uh, Marianne McMullen, who is uh, the owner and leader and founder of something called Next Music Generation, which is a talent agency and a podcast and, uh, and a group that uh, are trying to uh, really promote young musicians, uh, up and coming musicians in Canada. Um, Marianne, to start with, you were saying that uh, you had recently uh, been, think been going to uh, Country Music Awards and, uh, and some other awards. Uh, tell me about that. What was that all about? Yeah, um, so basically I was asked to participate in the Country Music Awards um, to be more of an affiliate and to look out and scope, um, scope out talent. Um, so I was part of the panel and, um, you know, I introduced the next music generation to the initial crowd that was there um, for the country, it's the country music awards. Mm -hmm. And have you been involved in other award ceremonies or, or, or broadcasts like that? Yes, I have. So I've been part of the hip hop music awards here in Toronto. Um, I was asked to be part of a panel um, and we were just talking about the mainstream and the industry and what the industry has to offer here and how the next music generation was going to make an impact and make a difference. What's the next phase of your, uh, your, your development? Uh, right now we're currently, um, we've wrapped up on phase two and phase three is going to be really exciting because we're looking at doing face recognition within our platform where people who are on video, they'll, their face, it, it will scan their face to log into the system um, instead of just using a general password. Uh, you know, um, you know, when we do our outside, when this coronavirus kind of blows over and everything is done, um, we're going to start a tour um, in Miami and we're going to be doing it on Miami Beach where, you know, the face recognition will recognize certain people and know and we can start distinguishing behaviors and if people are artists and whatnot and try to engage, the, engage with them. Well, it's really sounds exciting. like uh, Big Brother. So you're going to be in Miami and what's the face recognition software going to do? It's going to recognize people in the crowd? Yeah, in the crowd and it's going to identify certain behaviors and people, it will be able to distinguish if people are in the music industry or if they're artists because there's certain behavior behaviors that music artists have. It's really exciting, actually. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. What, 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 what kind of behaviors? Like playing music? What else? Um, playing music. Um, there's a certain way that people communicate. They walk. If they talk, like just certain mannerisms, it's, it's really interesting in how the body behavior works. So it can identify those kind of things. It's so hard to explain because <laughs> it's so high tech, <laughs> but um, it's really exciting though. And, and uh, you said that there's some sort of a reward system that you've got? Yeah, so basically within our system, um, in the phase three of our project, we're building out a, a lifetime pay system where um, people, if they, when they refer talent inside to the next music generation, every referral will be bonus. They'll receive a bonus. They'll be able to receive residual income. And, and they do that. Sorry, I don't understand. So what, what happens? They register with you? And they register with the next music generation. So say if you were to refer three people, you would, re you would receive a residual income for those three people. So you would get a 10% commission on every single referral. And then if they do any bookings or any kind of work within the next music generation, you would receive just a commission just based on their work that they've done. There's nothing like that. This is that a way of happen. getting some artists to, uh, to recommend other artists join in. That's correct, yes. Okay, and the benefit of joining in is that then you um, promote them to, uh, to uh, venues and or other opportunities for them to uh, perform? Yes, that's correct. So basically we have our own platform as well where we're actually developing um, the next music generation band. So we're gonna be doing a world tour, um, an audition tour um, globally, eventually, oops, once this COVID ends. Um, and then um, like 
all the artists will have a chance to perform within our platform and outside of our platform. And you say you've got a magazine as well. Tell me about the magazine. Yeah, so it talks about some of the artists. Um, so it's a platform for the initial artists that we're working with. Um, it gives them a different leverage, a different um, way of showing their content um, and getting it out there and distributing it. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, I have a partnership with a magazine actually in New York City right now um, and Forbes. Um, they're actually going to be doing an article on the next music generation and we're going to be collaborating so it will be a collaborative effort. So if you're just starting out in the music business and you're um, um, you know, up and coming artist, what are the keys to success do you think? Other than obviously joining your platform. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is just humility. Uh, and just being really like, yeah, being humble and being a good learner um, and not taking people for granted um, and just really understanding that, you know, not everyone is out to take advantage of other people and, you know, people really do want to help and support, um, but nothing comes for free. Like even with the artists, like, you know, they expect, they, they do expect a lot and I don't blame them. But at the same time, you know, the next music generation's already invested twenty thousand dollars. And in order for me to get the artists where I want to get them, you know, it, it's going to take a lot of humility um, from every party, and it's teamwork. Okay, teamwork right. makes right. the dream work. <laughs> and, yeah. and and so, how do you promote them? You get them on uh, what on Instagram and social media, and then uh, uh, gigs and uh, and other publicity. Much more than that, we have our own newsletter. I do all my own um, initial PR. So I have um, a PR team that actually works with me and we develop the newsletters accordingly. Um, so if there's a song or an album release, we reach out and um, we have about 30 million viewers. 30 million, like 30, an audience of 30 million people. Awesome, right. that's quite the audience. Yeah, it is, it's really cool. Um, but it's, it's taken a lot of time. Um, I don't want to go off topic, but it's just more of like, you know, it's because we haven't just jumped into the industry and we're, we're still building and doing a lot of research. Um, this is why it's really crucial and important because you want people to see that you're, you know, you're really serious, right? So when they take the person who's leading the pack seriously, they're going to take everyone that's following suit seriously as well, right? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's I just it, it's very challenging how to make money in uh, in the music business today. Uh, you know, they used to make money from records, CDs, whatever, and people aren't buying those anymore. I'm not sure how much they get paid by Spotify and other of the streaming music uh, platforms. Uh, and it seems like uh, you know they had to make money by live concerts, and the live concert business, particularly now seems to be uh, non-existent and even when it was existent it was you know the old uh, rock and roll bands uh, from 20 years ago 30 years ago that were touring that were bringing in all the people so it's a tough Absolutely. business to make money in today isn't it it is and i agree with you 100 percent. i think your instincts fed on um, in respects to live performances um and this is where the next music generation has the cutting edge and has like a different it's going to take a different spin because you know, when you look at the industry today, everyone's really out for themselves and they're producing music. You know, they're, they're producing their own band, they're producing their own music, but you know, we all come from somewhere, someone refers somebody, right? So um, not let alone um, through the loyalty program and the live performances and things of that nature. Like we can, right now I have a contact um, that is just waiting for me to put the band together so we can go live on a boat cruise. A boat world boat cruise. cruise. People don't go on cruises anymore? I thought people were were scared to death of cruises right now. No, they, with this, they're waiting. They've been wanting to work with me since like 2018. And I just said to them, this isn't the right time. This is, you know, I'm just putting the band together. So once the band's together and the COVID blows over, then we're going to actually, yeah, the, the band can actually get paid to perform on this boat cruise. So you're actually recruiting the different uh, band members? Yes, that's correct, yes. Fantastic. So you're, uh, you're also a, sort of a music producer as well as a uh, uh, publicist, as well as a talent agent, as well as yeah. a podcaster. 
Yeah, so I'm kind of getting to know the ropes. I'd rather, um, the thing about me is like, I understand the complexity of building a business and I want to understand the whole picture, the elements, you know? So like when people come talk to me, they know that I know what I'm talking about because I've done it myself. I've gone through that pain. Yeah. <laughs> But it's interesting because you said you, you came across this idea just by reading a newspaper once. Well, yeah, that was part of it. But um, I was a singer um, when I was young. And I was also a musician when I was young as well. I've won awards. Um, music, music has always been my kind of escape and my outlet for happiness, I guess you could say. And yep. I think everyone has a different way of connecting to music. Um, but you know, it's like finding, you know, it's like you hear all these motivation, motiv motivational people and they talk about, you know, follow your dream, follow your passion. And it is so true. Like when you find that one thing that makes you happy and you find that passion behind it, you know, that's what drives you and it keeps you up. It keeps you going. It keeps you motivated. And I am so grateful that I actually found this business because, you know, the, the position I was in like four years ago from what I am in now, I wouldn't have known any of the stuff that I know if my passion was behind it. Well, that's one of the keys to success in life, isn't it? To find yeah. your passion. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> best of luck and uh, thank you for introducing us to the next music generation. If people want to uh, contact you and or, you know, follow you, uh, how do they do that? Um, they can reach out to me at info at the next music um, They can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the next music generation. Um, right now um, they could look at the next music generation.com website, but it is going to be changing dramatically in the next upcoming months. Cause of my partner that's actually working with Kanye West in California, we're working together and we actually have a meeting tomorrow. Awesome. Well, good luck with that meeting. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. But yeah, everyone can reach out. My phone number's on the website and stuff. Yeah, I'm really excited. Thank you so much for letting well, me be. Marianne, thank you so much for joining us tonight and telling us about the next music generation. Um, as some of the listeners may know, I was president of the Mississauga Arts Council and on the board of the Mississauga Arts Council and maybe oh. not as big as uh, the next music generation. But um, it was uh, my passion to try to promote uh, artists and uh and try to get them gigs and to try to educate them on how to run their music business as a business. Because one of the things that I found was that a lot of um, musicians are passionate about their music, but are effect effectively are small entrepreneurs and don't realize that they got to run a business that has marketing, that has promotions, that has accounting, that has finances, uh, et cetera. Um, and, uh, and then finally they needed to connect. Um, and, you know, you talked about your reward system and connection, but uh, you know, collaboration and connection because they, they, they want to get gigs, they want to get ideas, they want to write songs, they want to put bands together. There's a lot of uh, connection that needs to happen. And so we talked about, uh, about connection, about creativity, and about community. And I thought all of those uh, were key. And I've, I've had the privilege of, of speaking to a couple of artists during this uh, COVID-19 time period. And it's interesting, some are really down that they're not getting gigs, no question. But others of them are really excited about the opportunity it gave them to be creative, and even more creative Absolutely. than maybe uh, in a normal time period. Yeah, I, um, you know, it's, I know it's going to be a really tough time, but there's going to be some great things coming, not just through my platform, but many others, um, you know, so especially yourself as well. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's a, it's a selfish, I don't think anyone should be selfish and think it's about, all about them, but there's definitely many things coming, you know, because once it's COVID, I don't think times will ever change. Like, I don't think it'll be the same, but you know, it, I think people are going to appreciate the fact that we have, we can go outside, we can do things, we can be social. So there's going to be lots of things coming. I think people are going to be desperate to be social and, and, and <laughs> together with other people at a yeah. concert. And there's nothing, I don't think there's anything other than maybe live sports and live concerts that bring people together and, you know, cheering at the same time or singing a song together. Uh, that's live sports and that's live entertainment and people want to share that in a group with uh, people they know and a whole bunch of other people that they may not know but that uh, they feel are part of their tribe their community so uh, I, I, I welcome what you're doing and I encourage you to keep doing it and I look forward to uh, some of the bands that uh, some of the bands and some of the artists that you promote 
So we're chatting with Marianne McMullen of, uh, of Next Music Generation. Uh, check her out on uh, her website or on Instagram or Facebook and uh, help her support uh, the Next Music Generation. Thanks, Marianne. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Have an enjoyable night. Bye-bye.